we have seen in the previous tutorial that when a user fills the forgot password form and then he is emailed a link to the reset password page. The link contains a password reset code and now in this tutorial we shall add a page for reset password. So how does it work? A reset password page presents a form that obtains email, new password and a confirm password from the user. This form also contains a hidden field for password reset code. These three items email, password and reset code are passed to the reset password async function of the user manager class and that causes the password to change. If you are following the course then the complete source code for this tutorial has been provided in your download section. Let us add the reset password page now. Open the solution explorer and locate the auth area. Right click the pages folder to add a page called reset password. Open the markup file reset password.cshtml now. Let us examine the markup. This is the markup for the reset password.cshtml file. First we have the directives for page, model and add tag helper. Then we have a tag for presenting a validation summary. An HTML table has been used to create the form for resetting the password. The first TR row is for obtaining the email of the user. The input text box is connected to a bind property called user ID which contains the email of the user. The next rows are for password and confirm password input text boxes. The last row contains the submit button and a hidden field for the password reset code. The, this hidden field is collected in the onGet method when the user reaches this page and brings it from the link that he clicked in his email. So this hidden field is basically used as a storage, as a transit storage. This field is collected in the onGet method and then this value is passed to the onPost method when the user posts the form. Next let us have a look at the backing class. Open the solution explorer and double click to open the reset password.cshtml.cs file. This is the reset password.cshtml.cs file that you are seeing here. First we have the namespace directives. The class has been marked as allow anonymous for obvious reasons. Then we have the bind property for email of the user. After that we have the bind properties for the password and reset password fields. Then we have a bind property for password reset code. Constructor based dependency injection has been used to obtain the user manager service. We have cached the instance as a read only member. Next we have the onGet method that executes when the user reaches this page by clicking the link for reset password. Recall that the link contains the password reset token. The parameter is now collected from the onGet method and it sets the code property that binds to a hidden field in the form. The same value comes back when the user posts the form. Next we have the onPost async function. This function executes when the user submits and posts the form. The password reset token is decoded back. The email of the user is used to obtain the identity user instance. The reset password async method of the user manager class is now used to change the password. If the function fails, then the errors are presented as validation summary errors. And if the function succeeds, the user can be redirected to the login page and informed accordingly. But this is a tutorial and therefore we have used the validation summary to present the success message. Run the project and reach the login page and click the forgot password link. We are asked to enter our email. Enter a registered email and submit the form. We reach the reset password page. We have reached this page directly because we are running a tutorial. However, in a real project, the user reaches this page by clicking a link that is emailed to the user. Enter the email and also enter the new password. Submit the form. We verify that the password is changed successfully. Thank you.